You're not gonna side with me because I know you're your friends. Your friends <laughs> it's really bad condition. It have some hairlines and then just for that you lost half of the price. This reference specifically, there's no available in the US right now. Part what two. are the chances of two in a day? I've never had this happen to me in my life. Yes, it's true. I'm five million dollars in debt and I used his money to fund my lifestyle. guy right here one of my first customers I sold him a watch I remember out of the trunk of my car I need, to, I need to take it somewhere to see if he's going let me, let, let, let let me take it somewhere to see if it's real or not okay <laughs> and they're like take the watch I'll see you later right or not I have the same watch in white ceramic you know how much I paid 410,000 you know how much I sold it for 245 recently I lost two hundred thousand dollars on it I saw two Richard Mills last Friday. You know how much I lost? Hundred grand. What? What? Hundred. Five hundred. Bought them for five hundred each. I sold it for five twenty. Two million dollars lost in the one year. Probably the market changed completely. I don't. I, I have, let me check. Didn't you push, put one up the other day? Freddie, what do you think it's worth? I don't know. Two, two, two hundred, two, two hundred, two fifty, two twenty-five. Full set. One ninety-seven. Twenty nineteen. That's what you saw. I didn't sell it. Full set. You know, papers. Probably the papers on these special pieces. Super important. For a regular watch note, but for a watch like this, mm -hmm. yeah, it's very important. I mean, there's there's two options here. I'm not buying for stock because I'm, I don't care about buying these pieces anymore. I lost too much money. Consignment, get to a realistic price, and then we could get prices from dealers to see what they offer. Let's make a phone call. I have a perpetual calendar black ceramic okay uh -huh. missing two links no papers perfect condition oh everything that i buy my brother is kosher never that's a dumb question <laughs> okay you're a buyer at what at 140 what is a realistic number me? Yeah. That you want a neck. Oh. You gotta be realistic. You can come up with this crazy price and you're not gonna sell. Bro, I guess 175. If I could start there. You want a net 175? Because I, I, I charge 5% on the consignment. I would like to net 175. You live 175. Okay, let's, let's do the consignment. Oh my God! What's up, man? This is after market. Would you? Would you? Know, factory. Would you? Factory, would you yeah. pick it up for? Um, a little bit over twenty. Okay. So yeah. you're not that bad. You're That's good. That, that puts me at ease. So this reference specifically, there's no available in the U.S. right now. I mean, I've checked all over. Yeah. There's no available. You trying to sell it? I'm trying to sell it. Or I'm trying to trade in. Okay. There's two options here that we could do. We could buy it, but we're gonna buy it at a very good price. But you could put it on consignment and we charge you 5%. The problem is that for me to stock Hublot, like I have the same model in gold and I'm asking 12,000 and I can't sell it. 12,000 and without I can't sell it. Oh, okay, without the diamonds. Without the diamonds, without the diamonds. With Hublot, unless it's a banging crazy deal, it's very hard to sell Hublot. Yeah. Very hard. Even I have here? Like even here in Miami? Extremely hard here. Miami, everybody wants that gold Prezi, the AP. Um, Chrono Blue Dial, 5980 Rose, you know, people want things that like scream, look at me. Mm -hmm. Let's say I have 20,000 on watch, right? After 20,000 on watch, I'll be making like 25% on it. But you gotta let it sit there, right? For six months, eight months, a year, and wait for that person to make that. Versus if you buy a Rolex at 15 grand, you might sell it for 16.5, but you sell it like this. Now, how many times can you turn 15.5 into 16 
within the time that it takes you to do that. If you could do that 30 times within the eight months that it takes you to make the money on this, then it's better to buy the Rolex. Craziest thing happened yesterday. I had a client come in yesterday. He traded this 2020 new style card, Rolex GMT Pepsi on a Jubilee bracelet because it has a very small imperfection on the bezel. And he traded it in for a 2023 true unworn Pepsi. Um, I have it here. Before we do the deal, I'm gonna have him inspect it because the client is very meticulous. But you know, at the end of the day, if you're spending your hard earned money on something, and you want something very specific. It's crazy because you're gonna scratch it yourself as soon as you walk out of here. But he said, you know what? If you worked hard for it, he wants to be the one who puts the scratches on it. What do you guys think? Do you guys, would you guys trade in a 2020 for a 2023? Yes, please. Champagne, though. Just the, just the classic. And you want boxing cards for all these watches? Are your price motivated? Boxing cards. I'm willing to pay more. So you're one of those. Yeah, look at, look at this. <laughs> so he's looking to sell four pieces and he's looking for two. What four pieces do you have in mind? No, four pieces to sell. Yeah, what four pieces does he have in mind to sell? This is the one that he has. He says it's a sell. The other ones he doesn't have here. What reference is this? Uh, no dates up. Because you saw the watch already. No, I didn't ask no, him. No, he hasn't no, opened no, no, it. No, 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 no. He just said I a sub, and I know the reference to the date, yeah. so I had to listen. Have you worn this? No, but I bought it um, without looking. I bought it without looking at it, guys, and it was a used watch. But what's wrong with it? Another, another impulse purchase. He's the one that, he's the type of guy that wants stickers, brand new. He wants to pay more for them. Yeah, I didn't stuff. actually wear it because I didn't like the condition that it arrived in. What, what condi <laughs> what's wrong with this condition? I just, uh, no stickers. That's it? It's usually. I like to be like the first one. What two. are the chances <laughs> of two in a day? <laughs> I've never had this happen to me in my life. He wants to trade this in because it's pre-owned. No. He's not happy with the condition. But he is it worse than the other guy? About the same? I don't, it's no, not the no, same. No. <laughs> no. He said he would have been No. <laughs> and like, no. I I, 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 I he said he never I'm wore it because he wasn't happy with the condition of it. He's beat up, man. I gotta buy it very cheap, okay? <laughs> it's really bad condition. It have some hairlines in it. Just for that, you lost half of the price. <laughs> what is that, 40? Yeah. 41. 41. 41's no dates. Would you pay the same Oh, no dates, yeah. Same thing. So, I'll be at night. Yeah, same okay. thing. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Or you said a yellow gold GMT, right? And a yellow gold GMT, but timeline on the GMT is like, uh, it can be whenever. Yellow gold GMT is Jubilee? Oh, yeah. <laughs> You want my personal opinion? Yeah. You can do whatever you want. No, you no, can no, listen. No, no. I want to hear it. I want to hear it. You said that one could be whatever. I'll wait that one out till really? the, the hype dies a little bit. Okay. Okay. There's another one here with fresh full stickers with barcode. Okay. How much is it? Three thousand dollars more. Hmm. You know what? If it was like a thousand bucks, because I'm actually gonna wear the watch. Like I'm gonna like go in the water. Like does it really? I'll take the other one. What was the other one? Uh, the yellow gold AP. Yellow gold AP 16202? Or 39 or 41. He's He preferably wants blue dial, but he's open to the other colors. Okay, so the 39 millimeter green dial is extremely rare. Yeah, they I haven't figured. posted one in t since 2021, and in 2021 it was 300,000. I like the idea of the toy watch being a quarter million. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, I'm never going to get mugged. Most of the time I'm wearing these sandals. And if you're wearing a shotgun, I'm gonna Yes, it's true. I'm $5 million in debt. And I used his money to fund my lifestyle. I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. I don't know. I think it's very hard to determine what the people around you are doing secretly, but this is not the first time something like this happens. And you have a lot of consignment clients that were in the dark. And we came out publicly and we said, when you have clients, Transparency is super important. You have to keep them in the loop. You have to keep clients informed. 
I forgot what episode that was, but that's what we said. I mean, let's face it, these, these guys are either the dumbest criminals that ever lived or they're, they're master marketers. They are gonna be in this business uh, for the long run. They disappeared pretty much and everybody, even the other YouTubers don't know where they are. That's what they're saying. People are worried. People are saying, you know, like, what happened to the watches that had a consignment with them? Even if it is a marketing stunt, I think mm -hmm. it's disrespectful to your clients. Yeah, I don't think it's funny. You're taking Genius. clients on an emotional wild ride because they're not, they don't know what's happening. You know, where's my money? Where's my, where are my watches? Because we've gotten a lot of questions from people. Hey, what do you guys think? Because we're great market dealers as well. I just don't think you should play with anybody's money. When it comes down to people's money, you don't know where their savings coming from. Right, know? right, right. Talk about money, people lose trust. This is, a, again, a company per company situation. So you have to deal with somebody you trust. People just see somebody get popular on, on TikTok or get popular on YouTube or get popular on Instagram. And they think, oh, that person is trustworthy. But, you know, who is that company? How long have they been around? Do you really know them? The so that's the most say? important thing, the reviews. This is now going to another level. But isn't this a second or third time this happens? Because before the blackout, wasn't that that group created to raise all the money? What's the blackout? So the blackout was an event that happened where, you know how we have consignment pieces? They just shut down their store, turned the store off, didn't answer the phone, uh, cell phones disconnected. They scratched their name off the window and just disappeared for what, a couple days, a week. Yeah, it was like four or five days that they disappeared. And then they shut up again? Then they shut up again and said that the reason they shut down was because they were doing some charity work and to actually show people the over dependency on social media when all of us depend on social media. Our business model is built on social cloud and YouTube and stuff. So without that, we wouldn't be in existence. So if you depend on that, how can you criticize it? Was that a cover act for something else that was going on? I don't know. The key issue here, I think, is trust. Because now we're getting comments in our YouTube videos saying, you know, what happens now with a great market? Who's going to trust a great market dealer now when Anthony Ferrer comes out publicly and says, yes, I mismanaged the $5 million of consignment money. They're gone, but I'm a good person and I'm gonna make well. I'm gonna make all of this go away somehow, which, how the hell? I'm saying well, maybe he has other debts that he's paying using stealing other people's. If you can sign a watch with me, right? And I sell the watch <clears throat> and then I use the watch, that money to pay for something else, that's a Ponzi scheme. Right. Because I have to use that money to pay you back. You gave me the watch. So, it's insane. Okay. What Anthony Ferrer did here is very unfortunate. He stole about $5 million from all these clients and it sucks. Great market dealers already have a negative connotation, reputation to them. And it doesn't really have to be that way. When, when you do business with a dealer, you gotta make sure that you can read the reviews on Google, have a connection with that person. You have to be very transparent. You have to be honest with the client. And that's why so many people are happy when you do a consignment with us. And it's very easy to work with us here. So. I'm sorry to the victims of this situation and even though he apologized, I don't, I don't think this is tolerable and hope some way, somehow that these victims get their money back. I don't know what else to say. Let's see if we can make a deal with one of the toughest dealers here at the Seville building. What do you think is more desired? A stainless steel Daytona or a stainless steel Submariner? Daytona. I, I said the most desired watch so. from Rolex, under 20,000 retail. It's a Daytona, it's a Daytona. It's a Daytona with a white dot. Yeah, yeah. And he's so, trying to say, so, so you sell I'm, more I'm Daytonas? saying that why does it sell for, why does it sell? Well, I don't know if I, I don't sell more Daytonas, I'll tell you why. Because a Daytona, it's, it's a premium watch, it's more rare to get, and the, and the price that the watch sells for it's over retail by a few thousand dollars. What's the retail and on the Daytona? Because it's so desired. That's why it has such a big premium. You know what? I think the I most think so. common watch that I sell, it is the Supermarket. Of course, Sumer. because it's cheaper. But I think the hottest watch from me, from Rolex, I would say would be a stainless steel Daytona. 100%, and that's why it has such a big premium. So what do you I guys think that is more desirable? A regular Sumaner or a regular Daytona? For I, me, it is a Daytona. I'm on special. Buy two. Get one free. Right, Special rare watch, factory set puppet, all see. right? From Hublot, cost thousands of dollars for pennies. 
Like an E's on the dot. Let me see the thing. What do you think he's worth? I wouldn't stock Yugo like that. It's especially cheap. with diamonds. It's very even, difficult. Even though it's factory? It's very difficult. It has a very high retail, I'm sure. What's the retail on it? I have no idea. It's Probably rough. high 40s, maybe yeah. more. If like, I needed one for an order, I had a customer for it, and I found it for 60 back, I would be so happy. So what is but the, I wouldn't stock it for 60 So what is the retail? I like to calculate those watches in this way, and you do it too. What's the watch worth without the diamonds? Without diamonds, it's probably like for stock around 10 grand. $18,000, that's what I'm asking, which is not that bad. Yeah. You can buy nothing with factory set diamond. Yeah. Does that number catch your eye? No. I, I bought it before for 15. I have to. <laughs> what do you think it's worth? Give me a little bit more. 11,000. No, I'll give you a good deal, but it's not 11,000. How much is it? 12,500, we'll close it today. For King Power, $48,000. Look at the condition on it. 12.5. How about that? It's not bad, it's just Yubla. It's really hey, trying to buy for stock. And we could do a trade. For another Yubla? No. <laughs> <laughs> How about Ferrari edition? With the new style class. I give you look, you can remove easily remove the band. Look, check this out. What can you buy magic. with eight thousand five hundred dollars? Oh, it'd be nice. Okay, Don't how worry. much we're talking about? So he wants eighteen thousand for this one. Okay, and this eighty-five hundred bucks. And this twelve thousand five hundred. We're Please not far. Admit. We're Please not far. Admit once in your life that those are good prices. They are. They are good. They are, no, they're good prices. They're good. Prices. Definitely. Okay. On trade. I can do on this 75 and thousand dollar less on those two. This one not not for me. On trade, not in sir. What does that mean? Explain to me. You have to take a watch from us. So watch is that that's, on trade you are doing, right? Those are the tricks that dealers play. You no, should you, buy you, brought that you up. should buy you at the same price trade. that you should trade. Buying or owning buying or trading should be at the same price. Why are you only gonna give me a good price if I trade? Why? Because you're gonna jack the price on the one you're gonna sell me? No. No. That's the You were the one who reason. brought up trade. You know, you know, you know, the, you know the prices. Well, I don't know. How am I gonna jack up prices? You're not gonna sell again. You're not gonna sell with me because I know you're your friends. You offer a trade. Didn't I tell you guys that I'm gonna walk into one of the toughest dealers here in downtown to work with? This guy right here. And when they call this guy right here, he throws a bomb on your watch. Dude. He offered you. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, well, listen. I will do it not on trade. I know. Money. Let's see what's up. You're beating me up big times. I'm not. So you say I'm how much here? 75 and 11. I 75 will order... and 11. Okay. So I'm going to go to the store and I'm going to check the prices and maybe we can come back within five minutes and try to close the deal. The US has any they released the thing that the... Do you buy this? Forget the aliens. Aliens are not going to give you any money. What's the retail? Buy this. Why? You're not going to need no money if aliens attack, bro. You're going to need guns. Well, I live with aliens How much? all my life. Have you ever gone to Cuba? Okay. Cuba is full of aliens. You and I'm there all the time. You want to do some deals? <laughs> How much are the deals? I got some good deals. How much? What's the retail? You want to check out the retail? Tell me. Do some deals. I'm going to get some good deals. You want to make some money? I love money. Okay, come on. Come on, Bobby. It's your lucky day. I'm gonna give you a deal. You guys are gonna make at least two thousand dollars. King Power Limited Edition. What do you see here? I already have a price set up. Right? Don't beat me up. I got some good prices. I'm gonna write them down on a piece of paper, and then I'm gonna ask you how much you pay. Just your opinion. What do you think this is worth? Fifty five hundred. Fifty five hundred. I thought that watch box was the worst people to deal with, but <laughs> I guess we have a winner. This is original? Original. What's the retail? Oh, full, 75. 75. Full palette. And 44 millimeter. 44 millimeters. So just, just guessing, probably like 18 grand. 18 grand. 18 grand, you heard? 18 grand. 55, let me see. I'm guessing. I'm guessing, I told you I don't know. Bro, it's, it's uh, your opinion. It's gonna do the same thing. Say it. 
Eight thousand. Who cares? Eight I already wrote it. Here. I, you made me give two prices. You made me give two prices. Fifty-five, eighteen. You gotta help me. Yeah, go. Twelve five. Twelve five. Twelve five. Eighteen. You said right. Mm -hmm. And fifty-five hundred. King Power. Oh, you did them. You did them one by one. How many did you say? Twelve five. Hublot Diamond. How much did you say? And the other one you did 8500. See what I'm saying? I'm giving good prices. Then this one he said 55 because he wanted to beat the shit out of me, but I put 85. You think you can work with this? I can try. To end the little Hublot story, we finally closed the deal with the first dealer. He calls it Mazali. Mazali. Is that why? Yeah. I wanna, yeah. Yeah. Who sells you a watch and still just too bulky? <laughs> <laughs> and I have to talk you into it. Huge. That thing is so dope. You like it? I love this watch. You only wear Rolex? Uh, lately, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Every I love owner. your AP over there. Every Every owner, owner. I got three kids, um, yeah. I, I know, I, I have not owned one. I see you like with the Royal Oak. Yeah, you know I, mean, I mean, that AP over there is gorgeous. I love that the one. The big yeah. one? Yeah. You like big watches. I do. Yeah. I'm big, yeah. Yeah. Peacock, you know? No, I actually like the footy better than the footy one. Do you? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah, I was looking at a bluesy yesterday, which I don't know, it's a little too, too dressy like for me, but I love the blue. Like, for instance, they. they I like the Cookie Monster. You like the Cookie Monster, which is the white gold with the blue bezel? Well, yeah. I like the Smurf. That's my grail watch. Yeah, 40, I just will never spend 40 grand on that thing. Yeah, and yeah. white gold, I'm gonna damage it. Yeah. Well, what are you asking for this bad boy if I were to make the mistake of buying it? You buy it, yeah. <laughs> You know what? There's people that come here to buy the Royal Look Offshore All Gold with the carbon brick. Yeah. And I tell them, I don't like that watch. It's the only watch that I put in super uncomfortable and heavy. When you go out, you just want to take it off. Carters, I don't care. I want to buy it. They bought it and they come after me. You were right. Yeah. It bothers me. Not yeah. I told you. What are the different sizes on the world? Like for you, I like 41. That's a 44. That's a 44. I'm sure. I'll let, I'll let you try. Okay. Like the 59, 68 that we have. I do wear your watch is high. Oh. Yeah. I mean. Uh, See that skipping? That's my heart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know this watch. I always liked this one in blue. It looks See pretty sharp mean? there. I don't wear suits. Do Italian, man. I don't wear suits. <laughs> it's not for a suit, man. <laughs> you know, it's like overlaps here, man. You know, that's like, you don't like it? Nah, it's never been mine. I like tools. I like yeah, big, yeah, big stuff. I'm a, I'm a peacocker. <laughs> is your wife big? No. No, 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 I did all right there. <laughs> The ladies Richard Bill that came out that they announced it on the highway. That's like that teal green with the pink. No, I didn't. No, okay. It's a ladies watch, but it's a super cool piece. Beautiful, wow. It looks like the Alexander Zerbrick that we have here. That's what I was selling him. That one's around 435000 And it's for your wife? No, for him. For me, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I see, I'm actually Sorry, crazy. man. It, I, saw, I saw pink and I forgot we're in the Barbie era. Oh, my bad. <laughs> no, I definitely like the watch, man. I will write so, it. So, yeah. this, and then he's also looking for a yellow gold day date index dial. Has to have some stickers on it. Like or black like, one we have here? Like he has that one, but he wants a champagne now. Champagne so dial with stickers on it. We could find that out. Yeah, yeah. so that's not a problem. That's not a problem. Now, we bought that one for 24, not for 25. Just looked it up. Mm -hmm. We bought that one for 24, not for 25. Okay. I got you. But the question was not for the 40, the question is for the 37. That's the problem. Yes. Do you think, you know why? Women don't buy watches. Dudes buy And there's now many men like me and you that buy their women watches. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, so. Yeah. Guys, stop buying yourself a watch and getting your girl a fake watch or a fake bag. Buy her watches like I do to my wife. <laughs>
We had a client come in yesterday from Canada. He was looking to buy five different pieces and he was selling four different pieces. We got his first watch in, it was a no date sub. We took that in as a deposit. He wanted the yellow gold GMT Jubilee, the new one that was just released. And we actually mazzled on that piece already, so that one's confirmed. If this all goes well, this is potentially gonna be my first biggest deal, if that makes sense. <laughs> Harley, I don't know what, it was in my shirt and it just fell out of the side of my shirt. How'd you catch it? I just went back and got it. Oh, it fell I felt it, hit, it's heavy on my neck. It hit the, the ground? Yeah. Damn, where? You can't even tell. No, it's like it didn't get like banged up that at all. And this is 24 karat gold, so it should be very malleable and very soft. Yeah. You bought this as a as a bar, and then we made the frame for you? Or yeah, you so uh, a buddy of mine gave, me, gave it to me as like... The bar? Yeah, and then he... I asked him what we could do with it, and he made, said he could make a frame, so we did it. That's cool, because you have a little piece of jewelry, but you have currency right here. Exactly. And this, what do you want to do with this? Like, what do you, what do so you want my, to share? my uncle passed away last week. And Sorry for your loss. Thank you. And he left, you know, he was being buried with those two items, and my aunt gave those to me, so I just wanted to understand kind of what they were, more okay. about them. Um, taking pictures of the serial number and reference number. This was his uncle's watch, so he just wants to know a little bit of info on it. What is it? Just to know what he has here. These two watches look very similar, right? They're a little bit different, though. What do you think the price difference between the two is? I, I personally think probably around two thousand. Around two thousand yeah, dollars? Maybe two to three thousand. Is this with papers or no papers? It's complete with papers. It's complete. Yeah, if you say around two to three thousand with papers, comparing this to papers, this one I don't have the papers for. It's box and watch, so I would say papers are anywhere about fifteen hundred bucks of a difference. So I'm actually asking twenty three for this. And you're asking twenty five five? Yeah. Oh, twenty five hundred dollar difference, right on the money. So if you look at the two here, they look very similar, but they're very different. The color is very different. Why? Because this is titanium, this is steel. If you look, they're both gray, but this has a darker gray tone and this has a more of a white undertone to it. Remember, titanium is lighter than steel, but also a lot stronger. So let's start by weighing the steel. 173.1 grams. And the titanium, how much do you think it's gonna be? Let's see, I think so. 144.9. This rotor right here, mm -hmm. this has an axle in the center like this, right? Mm -hmm. And then it goes into a hole with that, that rotor on top. What happens is, is that for so many years of not doing service on it, you lose lubrication here. So in that axle, it goes wearing out metal on metal until you get play, right? This play is causing this. There's a little bit of play mm -hmm. up and down here. Now, how do I know that there's play there besides because it's such a small movement? See the grains here? Mm -hmm. That's perfectly normal. You see that here? But you see a little bit of bites where it's not consistent, right? Mm -hmm. Right there. And then we go into here and you see it wearing down here on the edge. Yeah. So that's because you see where this is touching here, this metal. Instead of it hovering over, it's dancing. So over the years, it's just going like this. It's scratching that piece off, creating dust particles. So let's just check how it's sticking now. Knowing that it's a Rolex, my guess is that it's gonna be running perfect. Let's see. So you do have a bit of beat air. You're like right outside of Rolex tolerances, but considering that the watch is, what, 81 to 23, like 40 years old, and who knows how long, or what, if he even ever did service, the watch is running amazing. Mm -hmm. 